Hi everyone, Teddy Baldessar with teddybaldessar.com. In this video, we're looking at a watch from Mito with the multi-fort chronometer with an anthracite dial. So in this video and on this channel, we cover watches available for purchase on our website, teddybaldessar.com as an authorized dealer. So in this video, deep dive on this timepiece, final points of consideration at the end, but also throughout this video, if you have further questions or you wanna purchase this watch, a link to the product page will be in the description down below. But all right guys, let's jump into the video and take a closer look at his watch. When you think of brands that offer impressive value proposition for around $1,000, some obvious choices probably come to mind, including Seiko, Hamilton, and Tissot. And while these brands tend to dominate the conversation among enthusiasts, this price category also is home to another brand, Mito, probably one of the more overlooked offerings from a Swiss watchmaking perspective in this range. In the United States, Mito has often flown under the radar, lurking at times in the shadows cast by the popular sister brands such as Hamilton and Tissot. However, Mito's modern offering brings a lot to the table as an alternative to these more popular options and frankly is deserving of a lot more attention than the brand currently receives. Today, we're going to look at a very well-positioned everyday style watch that is going to really check off most of the boxes with the Mito Multifort chronometer with a silicium hairspring. Let's take a closer look. So let's speak to the Multifort chronometer on the wrist. We have a case diameter coming in at 42 millimeters, just short of 49 millimeters in terms of the lug to lug, and a thickness just south of 12 millimeters in part to a very slightly domed sapphire crystal. Given its dressier feel at 11.9 millimeters in thickness, the multi-fork chronometer should make a comfortable companion on a wide variety of wrists out there. The thickness is certainly going to aid in its overall wearability, but I think the number one thing to consider here is going to be the lug to lug dimension. When looking at typical 42 millimeter watches, 48.9 millimeters is not the typical range in which it's going to be projecting out from that measurement. So to see that helps us watch wear closer to that of a 41 millimeter case, all things considered. Looking at the architecture, the case features a straightforward design with a sloping bezel, vertical case flanks, and a simple 90 degree angles at the downswept lugs that measure around 22 millimeters across. Near the case back, the flanks give way to another bevel that eases the transition from the vertical case sides to the dome exhibition case back. One important area of differentiation from a brand like Mito compared to Hamilton and Tissot is the level of finishing when you're talking about just maybe the more basement level or the standard that comes. Not to say that Tissot and Hamilton fall behind significantly, but I think Mito is more consistent for the level of execution that you're getting across the entire spectrum of their models. With polishing at the lug tops, across the bezel, and on the facets nearing the case back, the overall presentation of the watch itself could be described as refined or dressy, though elements of the dial as well as the style of bracelet help to tone down the look for a more versatile wear. At the three o'clock position, we have a domed and screwed down crown that operates the movement just as you'd expect. Hand winding the Powermatic 80 movement inside is done with the first position while the date can be adjusted in the secondary position. Extend the crown out all the way to the third position and then you can advance and set the time. This movement is equipped with a hacking second feature to help you with time setting for precision. With the crown securely back into its first position, this model is going to come with 100 meters of water resistance, certainly adequate and nice to see here for an everyday watch variety. Between the almost universal 22 millimeter lugs, the multi-fort leans into a three link bracelet, generally oyster style, I would say in terms of its overall approach that is brushed across the top surfaces with polishing on the sides of the links. The bracelet is comfortable, well finished, is going to feature screwed in links, is going to to have a hidden butterfly clasp that tapers down from that 18.5 millimeters at that end, which then will also feature some milled components and smooth action and opening and closing, though there is a half link on both of the sides of the clasp. The micro adjustment and not having any ability on the fly is one down point of this bracelet, but otherwise very well done for the price and certainly will be something that I think you're gonna wanna have continued paired with this watch. Now glancing back over to the watch's front surface, the dial rests beneath the safety of a sapphire crystal that is ever so slightly domed and complete with anti-reflective coating on both sides. The dial itself presents a number of other elements that strengthen the finishing for dollar argument so often made by Mito. Now, starting with a deep charcoal gray or black primary surface that Mito calls anthracite, the multi-fort here features longitudinal waves, not unlike that of Geneva waves so often utilized in the finishing of mechanical movement components. Depending on the viewing angles 
and lighting conditions, these waves range from barely visible to impressively prominent, adding another dose of interest to this watch as a whole. Starting at the dial's periphery, a sloping chapter ring is printed white on gray with Arabic numerals at the five minute positions and hash marks in between. Moving inwards, we notice applied polished faceted trapezoidal hour markers that draw the eye towards the dial's center where a prominent Dauphine style handset is anchored along with a simple stick sweep second hand. The indices as well as the hour and minute hands do contain small helpings of luminous material. However, the loom isn't a highlight of this piece. In low light, the loom does not last very long, particularly on the dial elements, as it is pretty faint when charged up. But Mito does actually deserve some credit here for the decision to put loom on this dressier model, a strategy that many brands probably would just go ahead and just forego. Along with the water resistance and mass appealing design, the loom is another powerful element in the versatility argument presented by this piece. At three is a framed day date window with the black on white disc for the day date, breaking up the visual design to an extent, but adding legitimate utility in the process. Dial text is also under control with only the brand word mark and automatic at noon and the model name and chronometer text neatly printed in white at six, speaking to the additional attention paid to this Mito Caliber 80. Now turning this watch over to reveal the screw down exhibition case back through which we can view the Mito Caliber 80. Now this movement is based off of the Eta C07 family of movements and compared to some other executions of this caliber within Mito's collection, this example is also well finished, demonstrating spiral graining, mirror polishing, and blued screw heads across the bridges and central components with Geneva striping on the oscillating weight. Here you'll also find the modern Mito logo signed in the center as well as the reference to the Caliber 80 and chronometer certification along the bottom edge of the rotor as well. Of course, at this price point, any elevated finishing is going to be executed by machine, but overall, I think this is a nice looking movement for the utilitarian approach that of course it's going to have. As far as the technical specifications go, this caliber 80 operates at 21,600 vibrations per hour or three hertz, which is slowed down from the 28,800 vibrations per hour or four hertz base movement that was originally designed to operate at. By slowing the speed down and modifying the gear train, barrel, and mainspring, this movement goes from having an approximate 42 hour power reserve up to an 80 hour power reserve. Additionally, the balance assembly has been upgraded from a standard regulating pin system to a free sprung balance assembly. And finally, this watch is chronometer certified, guaranteeing a level of accuracy from minus four to plus six seconds per day. And to round it out, this does also feature a silicium balance spring that should aid this piece in resisting the negative effects of magnetic interference. This type of operation is going to forego the typical regulating pins on the balance assembly. However, in this instance, because you're getting a COSC certified movement, I think this is not going to be much of a concern. In terms of general accuracy, that was staying true to that cost parameter at plus two to plus three seconds a day when testing across five different positions. Just to unpack when looking at this movement, 21,600 vibrations per hour, three hertz. It does feature hacking and hand winding and has a power reserve of 80 hours. All right, so now to unpack when looking at this Mito Multifort chronometer with a silicon balance spring. So when most people think of Mito, I don't think this is the model they think of. I mean, the Multifort definitely has a lot going for it. And I think more people need to look in the direction. And I think if you get your hands on this piece, you'll understand what I'm talking about. This is a great everyday watch if you can, I think, work with the size. I think that's one of the challenges with probably some of these multi-fort designs. There's so much there with the checking off of the boxes and the price and where it's positioned that it might just not work just because simply it comes down to size. So that's one thing I'll just mention at the onset, but I think it's going to work closer to that of a 40 and a half to 41 millimeter case with that lug to lug dimension. It still is not gonna be overbearing on the thickness department. Finishing the, for the price is absolutely there, both from the bracelet, the dial, COSC caliber on the inside, so you're getting some nice up specification there and good peace of mind. One other thing I'll say, the loom could be improved. This is one area that I think Mito can continue to make happen. Uh, water resistance is fantastic, 100 meters, it's gonna have that to check off the box. But I think at the end of the day, that's really what this watch is. It checks off the box as simple as that. It also has a visually entrancing dial with those vertical set grooves. So if you like the look, you could pull off the case size. You have to consider this as maybe one of the most underrated everyday watches from the likes of Mito and maybe just from the likes of any brand out there. All right, guys, well, thank you again so much for watching. If you did enjoy this video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and hit the bell icon. That does help out the channel. But also, if you're in the market for the watch presented in this video, it is available on teddybaldister.com. We're a full authorized dealer of over 30 brands, quick and fast fulfillment, dedicated customer support, and a full factory warranty for all the new products that we offer. But guys, thank you again so much for watching. Be well. 
And I will see you all next time.